Today, Nvidia is doing something wild to their next flagship GPU. RX 7000 issues have finally been fixed. AMD announced something way bigger than Ryzen 8000, and AMD's new core destroys Intel. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, if you saw my recent video, you know that Nvidia was essentially warned by the US Commerce Secretary in regards to redesigning chips to get around US restrictions to China. And given that came right on the heels of all the 4090D rumors, I assumed that Nvidia would likely cancel the release. Well, it doesn't look like that's the case, but the company is planning something drastic to make it work. According to a new report from Benchlife, they claim the 4090D is still coming. Not only that, but they also claim to confirm that the GPU will not allow overclocking. Maybe this is one thing Nvidia did to ensure the US doesn't put more restrictions on it. And it does make sense, because board partners could potentially go over the performance set by US restrictions if they try to sell overclocked models. So Nvidia likely has to completely shut it down. Not only that, but according to known leaker Megasize GPU, there isn't even any kind of delay, which should mean a release at the end of January. To top it off, he was able to get clocks for the upcoming card. According to this, the base clock is 2280 megahertz, which is actually higher than the RTX 4090, and the boost clock is the same 2520 megahertz. And that, I will say, makes it really look like this will definitely have quite a bit fewer cores than the regular 4090. And don't forget that the initial report from Nvidia claims the card will have the same MSRP as the normal 4090. Now, when you're ready to buy your next GPU, get it where I built my first ever PC and today's sponsor. Micro Center, the one place with physical storage you can get any part you need for your PC build. And they could be coming to your town soon. In fact, they just opened their Indianapolis store and they're already working on North Carolina. So get pumped for what I call a PC gamer's heaven. I mean, what other place can you go that has a huge wall of motherboards? Oh, and you need a case? They've got you covered. We're even talking custom water cooling parts. And somehow they're able to still have some of the best prices in the industry. But they don't just have PC parts either. They even have a really sweet maker section. And for a limited time, new customers can actually get the Creality Ender 3 S1 3D printer for just 149 bucks. That's a great price for one amazing 3D printer. To pick yours up, check out the link in the description below. Next up for today, AMD recently rolled out a long overdue driver that fixes something big. For those who don't know, there's been one issue with AMD's newest parts that's been going on for a while now, and that's high idle power draw. Earlier this year, the company released driver updates that ultimately fixed the power draw issues on their higher end 7900 parts, but the issue has been prevalent on their lower end cards as well, and this new driver update finally fixes that. As you can see in new tests from Tom's hardware, the 7800 XT went from 33 watts at idle to 12.9, the 7700 XT went from 27.5 to 12 watts, and the 7600 went from 17.1 to 8 watts, making this a pretty stark difference over what we had been seeing previously. And that power draw drops even further when things like the display goes to sleep, etc. Either way, it's good to see AMD finally fix this. Next up, if you saw my last video, you know that I very quickly discussed the announcement from AMD on their Strix Point APUs coming soon, but I mostly focused on the 8040 series because that's what's coming next. Here's the thing though. While the 8040 series is set to come in Q1 of next year, Strix Point is also coming next year, and it's set to be the real performance king. Don't forget that the 8040 series looks very similar to their 7040 parts released in January. The main difference is that the new 8000 parts come with a much more powerful neural processing unit for AI. It seems like AMD is starting to really push AI now, so they're trying to get something out as quickly as they can. But the 8040 series is just Hawk Point, which looks to be more of a stopgap to their real upgrade. Upgrade, Strix Point. That's likely why they're both set to release in the same year. Remember that Strix Point is set to come with their next gen Zen 5, as well as RDNA 3 Plus for the iGPU. Not only that, but it's the architecture that includes their Halo SKU. That's the one rumored to come with a whopping 16 cores and 32 threads, as well as an unbelievable 40 CUs, meaning the iGPU would have way more cores than the RX 7600. And don't forget, that's RDNA 3 Plus. Rumors 
point to that SKU releasing in 2025, but even regular Strix Point is rumored to have 12 core CPUs instead of 8, along with more CUs. Not only that, but AMD claims that Strix Point's NPU offers up to three times the AI performance. Basically, next year is set to be a big one for AMD. And lastly for today, AMD's new little cores look to completely destroy Intel's. This story comes from a new Geekbench benchmark that shows off Intel's upcoming 144 core CPU. This is their Sierra Forest CPU, which means it was built using only Intel's little cores. And if that sounds familiar, it's because it's exactly what AMD did with their Bergamo CPUs. Remember, those are the ones with their Zen 4C cores, which is AMD's version of efficient cores. Moving back to the Intel benchmark, we can see that this was done with two of Intel's 144 core CPUs, which made for a whopping 288 cores. And in the benchmark, they got a multi-core score of 7,770 and a single core score of 855. Now, you may be thinking that single core score is way too low, but remember that Intel's little cores don't get anywhere near their normal core clocks. Plus, they don't have hyper-threading, which explains why the multi-core score isn't all that great either. And when we compare this to AMD's 128 core epic Bergamo chip, it completely destroys Intel's upcoming CPUs. I mean, we're talking in single core, it got nearly double, and in multi-core, it got well over double the performance. Also, don't forget that this is one AMD CPU against two Intel parts, though Intel's highest-end chip does look to be a 288-core CPU, but clearly it doesn't stand a chance. With all of that said, Intel's little cores are way smaller than AMD's, and this isn't a final Intel part. But if they don't get it's significantly better and AMD puts their little cores in Ryzen, it could be an absolute blowout. So while that does it for today, how wild are AMD's new cores? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out Micro Center in the description below. And as always, have a great day.